Julian Drexler was one of the architects of Paris Saint-Germain's 51 on their visit to the velodrome earlier this year. Associated Press and Sunday night, as the clock gets ready to strike 9 p.m. local time, the 22 elected starters of Olympique de Marseille and Paris Saint-Germain will take the field at State Velodrome. It will be the 92nd time France's two biggest clubs have played one another, and in many senses, it will be a familiar scene of bubbling malevolence and bitter rivalry, an atmosphere of such a strong flavor, in fact, that it will take place in front of an entirely partisan audience, after the local prefecture's police refused to admit away supporters, per RTL in French. Yet the title under which the match is played, Le Classique, or Le Classico, doesn't quite detail what has happened to the rivalry in recent years. The last time Marseille finished victorious was in the November 2011 meeting at the Velodrome. Since then, they have met on 14 occasions in Ligue 1, the Coupe de la Ligue and Coupe de France. PSG have won 12 and drawn the other two one in October 2012, a pulsating 22 draw at the Velodrome in which Andrew Pierre Gignac and Zlatan Ibrahimovic exchanged braces, and the other at the Parc des Princes almost exactly a year ago on Rudy Garcia's managerial debut, when the new coach set his team up to neutralize. In a goalless draw, um, DIDNT muster so much as a shot on target. That was seen by some as a moral victory. For many others, it was a de facto humiliation. Rather than going to a Toto with their greatest rivals, even for just one night, Marseille had been reduced to piling furniture up against a dead bolted door to keep the wolves out. The club's motto, Droido but straight to goal, seemed to have been left on the team bus. The reality of that game, and of Ohm's terrible run in Le Classique since 2011, is part of today's French football landscape. The weight of history has been superseded by PSG's financial power and their success in building outright sporting domination through those means. Eamon Abdenner was one of the second-tier talents that Marseille had to settle for in this summer's win to Boris Horvat get he imaged that much is understood at Marseille, and in the year since he took over the ownership of the club, American businessman Frank McCourt has pledged significant sums as part of what his regime calls the Ohm Champions Project. In October 2016, on inking his deal to purchase the club, McCourt pledged €200 million Euros, £179 million pounds to be invested over the first four years, per l'équipe in French, a figure that, after PSG's successful pursuits of Neymar and Kylian Mbappé, looks modest. The other major problem for Rome has been attracting those top-line stars. Having the money is one thing, but convincing potential recruits your project is for real is something else entirely. So, while they started by looking at recruiting Diego Godin and Iker Munian, as per l'équipe via Lucille Allard of Eurosport, in French, they ended up with the likes of Eamon Abdener and Valère Germain. Quality players, both. But neither is at an elite level nor an oop on coming talent. The phrasing of the Champions project has somewhat inevitably been thrown back in their faces after every defeat, but Garcia's appointment has at least given their efforts to move in the right direction a degree of know-how and credibility. They have already ruled out competing with PSG financially for any of the pretenders, so strategy has to be king. That has been the case with as Monaco, and they proved it could be done last season, beating the capital club to the title while also making a more significant dent both in terms of hearts and minds in the UEFA Champions League. With their struggles in recent weeks, particularly in the European arena, it's hard not to look at the Principality squad as victims of their own success given they were picked off in the summer's transfer market. Monica Vissa president Vadim Vasilyev poses with the club's key summer signings. Jan Coates all you get he images their time will come again, though. Even if owner Dmitry Rybolovlov's pending legal issues may make the atmosphere around the club a little twitchy, Monaco's modus operandi is unlikely to change. They trade, but they trade well. Monaco coach Leonardo Jardim knows it's about sitting tight. As well as making a substantial profit in the summer's dealings, they restocked with talent such as Steven Jovetic, Keita Balda and Yuri Tielmans. These players may not have made an immediate impact, but they are money in the bank for later. Not forgetting the actual money in the bank that can go towards added investment. Bertrand Tor, here scoring Lions winner at Everton, is one of the young talents that the club has invested its hopes in. Alex Livesey Dan House again he images that's what Olympique Lyonnais president Jean-Michel Allas pledged for his team at the start of the month to Le Progre via Alexander Jacquin of RMC Sport, in French, committing to buying the requisite talent to win back the French title and to finally nail a first European trophy. The seven-time French champions are on a similar track to Monaco, having sold big in the shape of crown jewels Alexander Lacazette and Corent and Toliso in the summer, as well as the experienced Maxime Gonalons and Mathieu Valbuena. 
Lions play has also been to invest in potential, and the early signs suggest that Bertrand Troer, Mariano Diaz and Ferland Mendy are gambles that will pay off, even if results and performances are uneven for now. The championship, and its leaders, may seem like a dot in the distance but PSG still have major squad trimming to do, and their focus is inevitably drawn to the Champions League ahead of domestic matters. Like Monaco, Leo no time is on their side. PSG's effect on League One ISNT just about finding the means to compete directly with them. For some, it's already about realizing the league is polarized and that the scramble for Champions League places is likely to be more open and intense than ever. Nantes and Lille went for the superstar coach route, appointing Claudio Ranieri and Marcelo Bielsa, respectively. Jean Catafaghetti images with that in mind, a few clubs are looking to superstar coaches, with equivalent players inaccessible to them, just as Lille did with Marcelo Bielsa and Nantes, who went big to bring Claudio Ranieri back to France. The jury is still out on the 201,011 double winners recruitment based largely on young imports from South America, but Ranieri's organizational skills are already apparent. Nantes played at Lille on the opening weekend of the season and were soundly beaten, 30. Ranieri bemoaned the lack of playing resources available to him at that point, and you had to feel sympathy. Even post-partial makeover, there's no exceptional quality at his disposal and the club lost its best player, Amin Herrett, before the season began. Not fifth place position owes everything to the joint best defensive record in the division, which in turn is down to the coach. Sunday's installment of La Classique may well not inspire hopes of a title race this season. If anything, it's an occasion that has inspired PSG of late with them storming to a 51 win on their most recent visit to the velodrome. Yet whatever one thinks of Nasser al Khalifa's club, it is one with a strong sense of its history, and PSG will ensure that this rivalry endures while the rest of League One's teams labor in their wake.